Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's an absolute privilege and joy to be able to see you this morning. I don't know about you, but we have been away from each other for 10 whole months. If you think about it, that much time has rolled by. And we have seen ourselves through some challenges, but praise God, today we can say that we have come this far by faith, and we have trusted in the Lord to get us this far. So we're grateful to him, and we are going to praise him because he is good to us. Amen? We're so grateful to have you back here, Millican Church. It's such a privilege. We are here together again. And so we thank you for joining us in person today. For those of you who are able to make it out, we thank you for being so faithful and being here. And we look forward to the days to come. And for those of you who are not able to join with us but are joining us by live stream today, we just want to say we... Yes. <laughs> live stream today. <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. We're so glad to see you here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Well, we're glad to have you all here, and we're praising the Lord with you that you're here. And so we thank you for those of you who are joining us with us by live stream. And we're just going to ask the Lord to continue to bless us as we join together through these two mediums. So praise the Lord. I just want to share with you a few announcements before we continue in worship. And uh, I just want to let those of you who have children and have ch had children be a part of our online uh, um VBS, we just want to say thank you for a very successful uh, VBS. We had a wonderful couple of weeks being able to do that. The children loved it and they learned so much. And so I just want to extend a warm thank you to the volunteers who, um, who helped out and uh, helped uh, Jessica be able to... Um, be able to put together such a, a, a great two weeks. She did a fabulous job with putting everything together. And I just wanted to say a personal thank you to her for all the hard work that she did with VBS. As a result, she has earned her rest. And so we are giving her a couple of weeks to recover and to restore. And therefore, there will be no children's church for this Sunday, nor for August the 8th. So please mark that on your calendars if you haven't already done so. And Children's Church will resume on Sunday, August 15th. So that's the third Sunday of this month. So remember that. No Children's Church for this week and the next, but we will resume on August 15th. Likewise, for our time of prayer, we've been meeting regularly, and so time of prayer will also be taking a break and will resume September the 7th, so please remember that, and we are going to thank you again for um, joining together. We've been praying together, praying for uh, a number of things, and especially with the re return of us coming back to this church, and also being able to pray for one another and our community and our world, and we thank you for doing that. Um, we're going to take a break for the month of August, but we will re resume September the 7th. And if you would like to sign up, just visit our website. You still will be able to do so um, to, for the upcoming fall quarter. So please sign up if you would like to receive the Zoom link going forward, and we will get that ready for you. And then next Sunday, we are going to be having a special um, service at um, a special pastor speaker who is going to be joining with us next week. Pastor um, Maskery is going to be joining us, and he is coming from Transform Transformation Church um, in Thunder Bay, Ontario, and it's such a joy to see how God has been blessing him and, and the ministry that's been going over there and seeing how it's been growing, and he's coming to visit us to share um, that experience and also to, th um, to thank for how Millican Church has been instrumental in, in their involvement with helping uh, our, their church um, uh, build and, and to grow. So um, he will be here next week. So don't miss that. And we look forward to seeing you. I do have some exciting news to share. Uh, for those of you who did not know, um, Ryan and Marley Genera um, were, uh, have been no stranger to this family here at Millican Church. And they are part of our family. And they have a new addition to their family. So they welcomed a brand new baby son yesterday, uh, coming in, yes, praise the Lord, coming in at 11 pounds, one ounce, uh, big boy, but good boy, he was very, very, very good, and his beautiful name is Oliver Robert Crozier Genero. So welcome to the family, <laughs> Oliver, and we are looking forward to see how God works in your life and we want to say uh, uh, congratulations to Ryan and Marley as they welcome their little boy into this world and to the family extended. Well this concludes all of my uh, my announcements for today. I may have a couple at the end of the service but until then uh, let's open in a word of prayer and then I'm going to invite you to stand afterwards. So um, let's pray and ask God to have his blessing on this service. 
Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving for your goodness to us. Great are you, Lord, and worthy of praise. And so we thank you once again for bringing us together again so that we can come together in one accord to give you praise and glory that is due to your name. Lord, I pray that as we continue this service, Lord, may your presence be evident in this place today. And Lord, I pray that we'll be open to uh, what uh, we have for um, what we stand in need of, Father God, that you will open our hearts, that you'll open our ears, that you'll open ourselves to your will and to your way. Father God, we thank you for Pastor Sule Prince, who is with us here today. Lord, I pray that you will be with him as he brings the message later on. We thank you for him, and we pray that your presence will be with him, Lord. Thank you for what you have done, what you are doing in this moment, and what you will continue to do, being our great, wonderful God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, we're going to continue in worship, so I invite you to stand with me as we sing, Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. My one request is, oh, God, how I need you. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need Righteousness, oh God, how I need you. When sins run deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Is Christ in me? Teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way. And when I can't stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Oh God, how I need you. Let us quieten our hearts together as we acknowledge.
that we are standing, that we are sitting in the presence of the holy, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-amazing, powerful God, creator of the whole universe and yet our Father, our Savior, our Lord, the lover of our souls, the shepherd that we need to lead us into the way that is right and pleasing. Father, we bow in reverence before you this day. And we declare that you are holy, that you are indeed the Lord, that you can see and you know us from the depths of our beings, and yet you love us with such tenderness, with such kindness, with such mercy, in spite and despite of who we are and the failures that we continue to do over and over and over again, even in the face of your great love and your provision of power and victory over everything that can attend us in this life. And we say, O oh God, like the psalmist, have mercy on us, O oh God. According to you, the, the, your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blood out our sins, all our transgressions, wash us thoroughly, O God. Cleanse us from our sins. For we acknowledge, O oh God, that we have sinned against you, we know we have sinned against each other. We know we have not done what is good and pleasing. And yet as we come, we know, O oh God, that you are full of grace and rich in mercy, and you are willing to share us with the cleansing flow of the blood of Jesus once again and to make us new, to freshen us and to enliven us. And so as we come, we ask you, O oh Lord God, look not upon our sin and the sin of the world that is so evident, but look upon the, deep, the depths of our needs and reach down, O oh God, with that tenderness that you spoke about in your word that woes us to yourself, that tenderness that comes with such compassion with such kindness that draws us into that place of repentance. Oh God, in your mercy, hear the deep cries of the hearts of the people of the world, ravaged by sin, torn apart by strife, by sickness, by pain, by disappointment by the impact and effects of this COVID virus that we are living among. Oh God, and be all that you said that you will be to your people. You are the deliverer. And so deliverer of our lives, of our souls, be here in this place and wherever we are worshiping this day across this world. Cause us to know, O oh Father God, that there's nothing too difficult in our lives that you can't deal with. And even at the point of death, you are able to raise us up in victory and in life because that's who you are. You are the God of life. So shine your light, O oh God, upon us wherever we are, in whatever circumstance we are in, and cause our hearts to rise to you in gratitude and in praise. Because you said in your word that you dwell in the praises of your people. So Father, we will praise the Lord while we have breath. We will lift our voices and declare that you are Lord. 
You are God over all the earth, over everything. And so we say, oh God, be with us. Rather, thank you for being with us right now. And reveal yourself as we open ourselves to you. And we will give you the praise and the glory. Because that's who you are. That's what you deserve. Spirit of the living God, come. As our Savior said, lead us in the path of truth. And fill us with power and desire to worship. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Let us say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Psalm chapter 145, verses 1 to 9. Again, that is Psalm 145, verses 1 to 9. I will be reading from the, the English Standard Version. A song of praise of David. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your work, wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the, t the frame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he has made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, Milliken. It is a pleasure to be with you once again. I know you've seen me on live stream, but now I have the opportunity to, to fellowship with you guys. It feels like home. Please do not tell my church that. But it's good to be here. If you have your Bibles, keep it open to Psalms 145. As you would see that going through this, this pandemic has caused a lot of stress on people's lives and on the church. People are still uncomfortable coming back, and we understand that. But those of you who are able to come back, we, we thank you for being able to do so. But we have a reason to praise God. Amen? You're here, aren't you? You're able to celebrate, aren't you? And that is a reason for us to praise God. Now, Psalms 145 begins with a vow. And it's a vow we should all make. It's a vow that David says that he will extol God and he will do it every day. And he would do it forever. That is David's vow. And that's a vow that we need to make ourselves. Look at the verse one more time. It says, I will extol you, my God and King, 
and bless your name forever and ever. Verse 2 says, every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Now, to extol means to set on high, to exalt above all others, to let others know our high opinion of a person. Now, the International Standard Version says, I will speak highly of you, my God and King. David resolves to praise the Lord. He says, I will extol you. Not, if I feel like it, I will praise you. Or, when things are going good, I will praise you. But I will praise you every day, forever and ever. Now, David resolves that he will praise God every single day, forever and ever. Apparently, forever wasn't strong enough, so he adds, and ever. Forever and ever. Now, I would guess that while most of us would admit that our prayer lives are not what they should be, at least we do pray. Often, many times a day. But, do we praise God every day, many times a day? Now, if God is as great as David affirms here in the passage, shouldn't we praise Him every day? You know, if we don't, listen to me, the root cause may be that we are not captivated by His glorious majesty, and his unsearchable greatness. So Psalms 145 calls us to bless, calls us to praise, calls us to sing, calls us to speak out loud to God about God. Realize that, that it is not about you. It is not about your circumstance or your difficulty. Your praise is to be about God. God is what is significant here, and we, we see this in the passage. Let me just point out a few verses. Verse 2 says, Every day I will bless you and praise your name. The second part of verse 6 says, I will declare your greatness. Verse 7 says, They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The second part of verse 10 says, All your saints shall bless you. And the last verse, verse 21, says, My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Now understand this, church. Praise is spoken. Praise is not quiet. We cannot just think that God is great. We have to say it. We have to sing it. And sometimes we have to shout it. Sometimes we have gotten too sophisticated for God. Too sophisticated for church. We don't want to clap or because we don't want to disturb our neighbor or we don't want people to see our, our great praise to God because we don't want them to sing certain ways of us. Listen, sometimes you have to shout it. David said in Psalms 40 and verses 10, I have not covered up your righteousness in my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and salvation. I have not concealed your loving devotion and faithfulness from the great assembly. If God is great, it must be proclaimed. But notice, both in verses 1 and verses 2, there's an emphasis on the I will. Look at it. It says, I will extol you. Verses 2 says, I will bless you. As one joins in this song, each member of the congregation is committing to praise. Praise involves an act of of the will. We must decide to praise the Lord instead of other substitute gods. What are you talking about other substitute gods? Understand this. Everyone will praise something. It is not like Psalms 145 or any Psalms for that matter are only speaking to a small subset of religious people who are interested in the topic of praise. Psalms 145 is speaking to every person that ever lived. The question is, how do you finish this sentence? I will praise. How do you finish it? We were made for praise. 
the praise that alone belongs to God, the King. Okay, now while almost every English translation of verse 1 renders the first portion as God, my King, the Hebrew is clearly my God, the King, which is a significant statement placed on the lips of King David. God is not just king, God is the king. And although David may have been the king of Israel at that time, God is nevertheless nevertheless, the king of kings, and therefore David's king as well. So the question is, can you say, he's my king? You can if you have bowed your knee to Jesus Christ, and submitted your life to him. But also, don't miss the little pronoun, my, in verses 1. You cannot praise God unless he's your God. It is not enough that he's your parents' God. He must be your God. Your wife's God won't do. He must be your God. For God to be your God, you must come, listen, as a needy sinner to the cross where God sent his own son to bear the penalty for our sins that you deserve. God set the seal of approval on the substitutionary death of Jesus by raising him from the dead. You must trust in the crucified and risen Savior as your Lord God. But look, David continues by talking about the stunning nature of God. What is he saying here? He says, great is the Lord... Verse 3, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. That vision of God's greatness, listen, leads David to say that he is greatly to be praised. Now I want you to notice the logic. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. That means that our praise is tied to our view of who God is. If we believe that God is great, it moves us to great praise. But if our hearts have a low view of him, if we lack appreciation of his greatness, it will lead to a lack of praise and worship. Low views of God lead to low views of sin. A low and weak motivation to serve. And empty worship. You know, William Plumner a plumber, he's a commentator, and he says this, nothing has a more pernicious effect on character than low thoughts of God. Unless we have great thoughts of God, our thoughts of sin will be low, our sense of obligation feeble, and our praise dull. And that is reinforced by what David says here in verses 3. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Our praise should be great because God is great. Somebody hearing me? Our praise should be great because God is great. You will not greatly praise the Lord if you don't think he's great. You know, another version says it like this. Great is the Lord and worthy of much praise whose grandeur is beyond understanding. In connection with your great thoughts of God will flow great worship of God. So understand, a great theology of God leads David to doxology, to praise God. And his doxology flows from a high theology of God. So you cannot worship God as you ought until you know him as he is. I hope somebody's hearing that. And as you become knowledgeable of who he is, it ought to move you to great praise and worship of him. As you begin to really see who God is and understand his magnitude and his greatness, that should flow and bubble up in you a need and a desire to want to worship God. Not because it's 9.30 and service is ending at 10.30 that this is a routine that we have to do. There should be a need, a desire, a yearning, a want to to worship God. 
do you want to worship God? As your knowledge increases of God, so will your worship. Praise requires great thoughts of God, and great thoughts of God fuel praise. And you, you got to you, you got to see this in the Bible when when they actually see who Jesus is in the Gospels. What what happens? They fall. Peter says, "Get away from me!" Look at you know there's that song I could only imagine. When I get to heaven, what I will do? Will I fall? Would I bow? All these great ideas. You got. I guess he didn't read Revelations. I like the song, but you got to look at Revelations. John says when he when he sees Jesus, he falls down as though he were dead, and that's the ultimate response. When we see the greatness of God, we cannot comprehend it. You know, we use that word greatness today, and it's kind of overused. People use the term great for things like deodorant, or this hamburger is, is great, or I live in this great city, or that athlete, he's so great. Some have even used this adjective as part of their name, Alexander the Great. Sometimes you hear people say, after talking to a, a famous politician, I have been in the presence of greatness. Now, I don't want to downplay the significance of the importance of gifted people, but all human displays in greatness pale in comparison to the greatness of God. Only of God can we say, how great thou art. When we are extolling him, then we can truly say, I was in the presence of greatness. You know, John Wesley said, give me a worm that can understand a man, and I will give you a man who can understand God. God is great. The Lord is worthy of the most lavish and enthusiastic praise that you could give him. But look, David continues. Look at verse 4. He says, one generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Understand this church. This is important. Praise isn't meant to stop with us. God wants us to light the fuse of the next generation so that they also may see the greatness of God and the power of his mighty acts and give him praise. So our mission as a church is not to entertain our kids. Our mission as parents is just not to entertain our children. It is to pass on the praise of God to the next generation so that they may pass the praise of God to the next generation so that they may pass the praise of God to the next generation. What is your legacy with your children? What is your legacy with your grandchildren? You may leave them money. You may leave them a great education. You may leave them great skills. But do they know God? Do they know how to praise God? Do they know about him? You left them absolutely nothing if you have not given them God. And I say that boldly. We are to tell our children how God created the heavens and earth. We are to share with them the stories of God's miraculous provision amongst the saints throughout the years. We are to share with them our testimony of how God saved us, how he has helped us, how God has healed us, we're to talk about the powerful things of the Holy Spirit in our lives as he has gifted us and as he has led us. Do your children and your grandchildren know about God? Listen, David doesn't end there. Look at verse 5. He says, On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. Look at that. I will... I, I, I'm not going to read self-help books. I'm not going to empty my mind. That's foolishness. We don't do that. That's paganistic. We don't participate in stuff like yoga. But what does he say? I will meditate on your glorious splendor and on your wonder. Praise comes not only from emotion, but from careful thought, from careful meditation on God. 
David meditated not only on the great things that God did, his wondrous works, but he also paid attention to God's glorious splendor. The idea of the glory and wonder of who God actually is. Spurgeon said it like this. It seems then, dear friends, that David studied the character and the doings of God and thus praised him. Knowledge should lead our song. The more we know of God, the more adequately shall we bless him through Jesus Christ. And that's what I want you guys to get, to connect. The more you know God, the more you're going to want to praise him. The more you're going to want to worship him. When you realize what God has saved you from, and where God has brought you to, you are obligated to praise him. But it's not just an obligation that you you do it. It's a desire. It's a yearning. It's a love. It's a passion that you do it. I want to praise God. I want to stay right here in this moment, at this time, and give God glory. I'm not going to go on my knees and pray about this need and that need and what I need here and what I need there. It's not about that. It's about God. You are are good regardless. When we think about the aspects of God's glorious splendor, his majesty, his, his wisdom, his constant presence, his complete knowledge, his unlimited power, his loving and wise plan and purpose, all this should stir up praise within us. When we think of God's wondrous works, his, his work on planning, his, his works on creation, his works on providence, his works on rescue, his works on salvation now and in the age to come, all this should stir up praise within us. Okay, let me close this off. Look at verses 8 and verses 9. It says, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his mercy is over all that he made. Now, this is, this is amazing because if you look at this verse, you will recognize that the words that David speaks uh, in praise of God's compassion here are almost verbatim of Exodus 34 and verses 6. Now, you probably remember that passage, the passage when Moses says, um, Lord, reveal yourself to me and I, I want to see you, Lord. It's a passage where God passes in front of Moses, but he shows him only his back, and he says to him almost verbatim these words, I am God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. I am good to all, and my mercy is over all I have made. Almost verbatim, David is quoting that great scene from Moses. In other words, David is saying here that God's grace and his mercy and his forbearance and his patience and his loving kindness and his goodness ought to be praised. Moses asked to see what God was like and the Lord said, this is what I'm like. I'm gracious, I'm merciful, I'm slow to anger and I'm abounding in steadfast love. Do you know what's very interesting? If you look at the story of Jonah, when Jonah is arguing with God in Jonah chapter 4 about the fact that he didn't want to go to Nineveh to preach the gospel, he said to the Lord, Lord, the reason I didn't want to go there is because I knew you were gracious and merciful and slow to anger and abounding in love. You guys don't see that. (laughs) He says, I don't want to go there, God. Because I know you're compassionate. I know that you're loving. So I don't want to go. Isn't that amazing? You see what Jonah is saying is, I don't want to go to these pagans in Nineveh to preach because I know you'd forgive them. I want to preach to my own people. I want, to, I want them to repent. You sent me to these pagans in Nineveh, and I know that if you send me there, they will repent And it makes me mad because I want my own people to repent, not these Gentiles, not these pagans up here in Nineveh. And I knew you were like that. Remember how the story ends? If you look at Jonah uh, chapter 4 and verses 9, the Lord comes back to Jonah and he 
says something very interesting that echoes actually the rest of this psalm in verses 14 to uh, 20. He says, Jonah, you, uh, you know you had compassion on that plant that I caused to grow overnight. When it died, your heart was sad, but there are thousands of people in the city that don't know their left hand from their right, along with many cattle, and I had compassion on them. Listen, let me say this to you. God's compassion for people is abounding. Jonah is sad that the plant died, but God is sad for the people. You see the central attribute of God, his grace, his mercy, his forbearance, his patience, his love and kindness, his goodness, his compassion ought to make you praise. Coming back to church, you should come with a new perspective, with a new idea, with a new discerning for God. God, I'm going to come here and I'm going to praise you. And I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what anybody else is doing. It's between me and you. And I'm going to praise you every day. Forever and ever. And ever. Understand this. Prayer will end when you get to heaven. Praise will never end when you get to heaven. So begin to praise God now. And instruct yourself when you get to heaven. God is worthy to be praised. That's why John says, God is love. We should praise God because he loves us. And David instructs us in this psalm. You're coming back to church. Milliken, new perspective. New ideas now. New yearnings. Oh, I'm going to come and I'm going to praise God. We went through a disaster but you brought us through. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is supreme. Your word is from you, and your word is about yourself. It reveals who you are and what you're like and what you have done and are doing and will do. It reveals your way of salvation. It reveals your attributes, your characteristics, your providence, your rule, your purposes, your salvation, your gospel, your grace. And so as we give attention to you today, we pray that great thoughts of you will lead us to great praise of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor Sule, for reminding us of the purpose of why we've been created, to praise the Lord. And so we're going to do exactly that in this closing song. I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing together, How Great Is Our God. Let's worship the Lord together and let's do everything with everything that we are to praise the Lord. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice. How great is our God. See with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands. And time is in his hand, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father.
the spirits of the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. How great is our God. See with me how great is our God. And I will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. See with me how great is our God. And I will see how great, how great is our God. My heart will see how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will see how great is our God. How great is our God, see with me how great is our God, and I will see how great, how great is our God. bit longer because we truly do serve a great God. I'm, I'm so ecstatic. I mean, like, I've been revived. I've been recharged in my spirit because I know I serve a great God. So let's not be silent about it, church. We have been given an incredible privilege to praise. We have been given it. So let's not let the rocks cry out in our stead. Let's take every opportunity that we have to give God praise. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to invite Pastor Sule to do the benediction, but I just wanted to remind you that if you would like to give um, the offering boxes at the back, I know that we um, haven't been doing an in-person offering, but uh, we truly have been um, blessed by you um, through this pandemic season, and we appreciate all your support, and please remember that you can also give online as well. That is still open to you, and this is not about dollars, but this is all about giving back to God what he has given to us. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Milliken, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This week, go praising God every day. Amen? Amen. Amen.